Let me guess, you're new to Muay Thai, am I right? Or maybe you're in the beginning stages of your Muay Thai journey and you're just looking for ways to improve. So you, sir, or ma'am, or non-binary being are in the right place. If I were to give myself advice, go back in time and know what I know now, these are the things that I would definitely make sure that I'm aware of. I'm Paul, pro Muay Thai fighter living in Thailand. Hey, I'm Sean, pro Muay Thai fighter living in Thailand. No, we're not related. And yes, Paul is very tall. And if we were to start a Muay Thai training again from scratch, this is exactly what we do differently. Number one, one thing that me and Sean can agree upon is that we would travel to Thailand immediately. Now, traveling to the Mecca of Muay Thai is obviously one of the best moves that you can make because you're gonna be learning the foundations from some of the guys who have been immersed in the sport and the culture from day one. To be able to model after these legends can be really helpful throughout your entire career. So if you can have that standard set where you're training four or five hours a day, when you go back home, yes, it may be a little bit of a disappointment to have to hold pads for other people rather than it being all about yourself. But if you can set that standard and have that type of work ethic, stay after class, then you'll gain the attention of your coach and the respect that you deserve. Number two, we would focus on our athletic development and mobility a lot sooner rather than later. I've gone through a number of injuries and setbacks, especially during the highest part of my career, my peak. I just signed with Glory Kickboxing. I was just finished fighting for the Lion Fight World title and then I just got plagued with injuries. That has helped me to really realize the importance of strength and conditioning and bulletproofing my body, working on mobility, becoming stronger, becoming more mobile, more flexible so that I can do different techniques. But it took a lot of time off and a lot of injuries that still kind of hang around for me to be able to learn that lesson. So learn from our mistake. Yeah, early on in your career, I mean, when I was younger, you can get away with having a fight, not taking care of yourself and getting right back into training. But as you get older, I'm 33 now, I need to make sure I'm taking care of my body and my mind, watching my nutrition in addition to focusing on the strength foundations, mobility and flexibility so this way I can get back into training right away. Longevity is the name of the game. Number three, become obsessive about the fundamentals and the defense. When I first started, I was all about power, aggression, and raw strength. And like we were saying, strength is really important and conditioning is really important. But if I were to do it all over again, the foundations of the techniques, the jabs, the stance, the defense, more importantly, is something that I would really take a lot more seriously knowing that if I'm going to be in a sport for a while, I want to take as little damage as possible. In Cobra Kai, they mentioned that it's the offense, the attack that brings people into the gym, but it's defense that wins championships. And I second that opinion. Number four. Number four. All right. Number four. <laughs> Try to understand that major ups and major downs are an inevitable, inevitable part of your Muay Thai journey. Yes, for sure. My highest highs have always come with the lowest of lows and vice versa. I've definitely made the most changes when I've been going through the lows that we do experience. There was a time where I had a ton of money saved up in my bank account doing this. There was times where personal life got in the way, but I just never stopped training. And I feel like that part of it, just continuing the grind and the discipline is what actually got me through those lows and tough times. Yeah, you have to understand that the fighting world is not an easy world to be in. And so if you're going to be in it for a while, understand that injuries are going to happen, setbacks are going to happen, there's going to be challenges inside the gym, outside the gym. And so just being aware of that and making sure that you're mentally prepared to deal with the ups and lows is going to help you see long term of what you're really trying to accomplish in the sport. Number five, know and understand your why at a deeper level and connect with it. I think this is really important and it's really important to revisit your why because it is going to change over time. We actually talk, me and Sean talk about this at depth in one of the videos on my channel of how our why has changed over the years because initially it was more superficial and it has become a lot more intimate over time. Yeah, and another key thing is that we were just mentioning that there's a lot of ups and downs. If you don't have a clear why you're fighting and why you're going through all these downs, then you're gonna just give up when you're faced with these types of challenges. So really understanding and connecting with a deeper reason to why you're fighting, it's gonna be super important to making sure you're succeeding in the sport in one form or another. Number six, drill and spar as much as possible. When it comes down to it, this is where a lot of the muscle memory and timing and reaction is gonna come into play. 
And if you got, listen to guys like Sanchai, when they first started training, they didn't have pads, they didn't have shin guards, they didn't have anything. They would just spar, lend sparring, which is like play sparring. And that's where they're able to pick up their timing, have a little fun, and really uh, adjust their technique and find their fighting style through the drills and through the sparring sessions. Look at the creativity that has come from the jockey gym. I was able to train with Chawala at the Namsak Noi camp who came from the same exact gym as Sanchai, as Lerzilla. And all of those fighters have something in common. That's their creativity and the uniqueness in their style to be able to play with their training partners and develop who they are on top of the fundamentals. Tip number seven is understand that 80% of your training is gonna be solo training and you need to obsess over it. Over the years, the most dependable person that I've had is myself and the heavy bag. So a lot of the times that I'm building on my creativity or trying something new, allowing myself to fail, is in those times that we are training alone. I think it's really important in being able to keep your discipline, whether the gym is open, whether it's not. There are gonna be personal problems that pop up in your training partner's lives or even your coaches. And you can't rely on that and make an excuse not to show up to the gym because of something that someone else controls and that is out of your control. You just keep going, you show up to the gym, putting the work yourself, and those repetitions will add up over time. Yeah, like Paul said, you are your best training partner and your own best coach too. And learning how to be your own best student and master is gonna be super important for you to actually improve because you can't always count on your coach being there, you can't always count on your training partner to be there, but the thing is, heavy bags, they're always there for you, you're always there for yourself, and as long as you're showing up, putting in the reps, putting in the focus and intentional work, then you can really see a lot of improvement in your training and in your fights. Uh, fight skills. Now, if you're serious about your training and you want more guidance in your solo training, check out these videos right here. There's going to be game changers for you, so click here, watch this first video, and I guarantee it's going to change the game.